Salty Soul gives us old school vibes on this midnight train. I'm going to review and rate this album. Coming up. This is the fifth studio album from Bien Ame Baraza, Willis Chimano, Zavara Mudingi, and Polycap Otieno. Kenya's award-winning Afropop band, Nairobi's own, Salty Soul. Initially an a cappella group that met in high school, the band over the years have taken different influences from pop, Afropop, Afro-jazz, traditional, and gospel. Going back through their catalog, the band has leaned into a more acoustic sound, with the exception of their 2019 project, African Sauce, which had a more trendier sound, packed with notable features, such as Burner Boy, Patorankin, and Mikasa, to name a few. Whilst I did enjoy the album, there were a few skippable tracks for me, but where I felt African Sauce was lacking, Midnight Train makes up for it, and the result is a sound at its core that is retro, but yet so trendy at the same time. The intro begins with their acoustic sound that we are familiar with and have come to love Salty Soul for, leading us into the album titled song, Midnight Train, track number one. Polycup strums his guitar and the hook, steady rocking on the midnight train. A song that gives me old school vibes, reminiscent of the 60s, 70s era. A chugging train transitions us into track number three, Insecure. A song that reflects on insecurities, with the female being the center of this topic, who is referred to in the song as having a body like a movie. <laughs> I really think Salty Soul deliberately put one or two songs on their albums that makes the listener just want to roll their eyes. Because I do recall on a previous album, the line Girl, do me like assignments? Being used. With that being said, those corny lines are repeated over and over using different harmonies and catchy melodies, making them sound fresh and original. And as a result, I catch myself singing these very same lines. So yeah, I guess your body is like a movie, girl. Feel My Love is track number four. A love song about a relationship that stays rooted in love, even through its hard times. Sung in Swahili and English, which, by the way, I seriously think Swahili has to be one of the most romantic languages in the world. Listening to the song just makes you want to find that special someone to break up with and then make up with while playing the song. It's a vibe. And then there is Brighter Days, track five. Talking about the song does not give it enough justice. You have to experience it. This is the part of the album where Salty Soul takes us to church. With the Soweto Gospel Choir feature, this uplifting gospel-inspired anthem talks about life's trials and tribulations, assuring the listener that setbacks are temporary and through it all, keep pressing on because brighter days will come. The beat sounds very similar to Maxi Priest's 1990 hit song, I just wanna be close to you. For those who are old enough to remember, Brighter Days is an amazing, inspiring song that only deserves your best headphones when listening to it. It's that good of a song. Number six is Nenda Lote, a song sung in Swahili, which is not a language I speak, but I dug around the internet to try to figure out what the meaning uh, behind the song was. Uh, another favorite of mine. And from my research on the internet, what I found was, it says, the song talks about a quarrel between a man and a woman. And that, that, that's all I was able to come up with. So all my Swahili speaking people, please comment below. I would like to know the whole meaning of this track. Also, shout out to the drummer who really kills it on this one. Sonically, this song was reminiscent of the late great Oliver Mtukudzi's music from Zimbabwe, who Salty Soul have mentioned on a previous album, being an artist they looked up to. Track number seven is Susanna, I hope you happy now. The album lead single. Susanna is what some may refer to as a sugar baby, a lady who uses men to live a luxurious lifestyle. At various points of the song, she is spotted with her sugar daddy slash sponsor, 
on Instagram, in China, and various other random places. What I like about this song is it comes from a place of love. It does not shame the lady. Instead, the hook expresses how Susanna's community loves and misses her and only wants to see her be the best person she can be. Come back home, Susanna. Come back home. We love you. We've all known a Susanna at one point in our lives. What I will say is, from my experience, typically Susannas never post their sponsors on the Instagram. Especially if you have other sponsors. That's rule number one in business. You never want to annoy your other investors. Another great song, also a fan favorite. We have the Set Me Free interlude at 8. A throwback a cappella groove that showcases how well Salty Soul's voices mesh together. Having learned at an old boys high school, this interlude really reminded me of those days. At number 9, we have Every girl deserves to feel like a queen. I'm probably out of key with that one. We have My Everything, a song dedicated to making both the man and the woman feel special in a relationship. We have an yeah, I Irie feature that blends very well with the song. I think Salty Soul did a great job at bringing India Irie into their world. And, to, and towards the end, they all start ad-libbing, adding different melodies and harmonies with India Irie. Definitely one of my standout tracks on the album, which is a hard decision to have made because every song on this project was strong enough to have been a single. Willing, are you willing? Is track number nine, Wake Up. An interpolation of Dennis Edwards' 1984 hit song, Don't Look Any Further. Deo, my deo, jumbo G-I-O, if you remember that jam. I'm not mad at this sample. Salty Soul really made it their own. I think they did the song justice. At 10, we have Sober, a song that focuses on alcoholism, with each member telling the story of an individual who's trying to get his life back together and make amends with those he has heard from his addiction. Track number 11 is Rumba Japan, a trap influence banger with the lead guitars and horns really bringing the rumba sound home on this one. A very fitting title. I really like the title on this one, Rumba Japan. The final track, number 12, Disco Matanga, is featuring Show My Jersey and Black Motion. The sound is South African, known as Gom, a genre that came about in the late 2000s. It's catchy and makes you want to dance when hearing it. What I enjoyed about this album is how Salty Soul were not afraid to take different musical influences and infuse their own style. This album is solid from back to front. Its retro disco vibe gives it a timeless sound that toes the line well in appealing to the traditional Afro-pop listener and also someone who may be looking for a more crossover sound. This is a great album and should have received at least a Grammy nod. I feel where Afropop is now, it is high time we have our own category at the Grammys, the same way Latin does. I'm excited and look forward to more future projects from Salty Soul. I give this album a 9 out of 10. These are my own thoughts. Let me know how you feel about the album. Which Afropop projects from 2020 do you feel should have been nominated for a Grammy? Remember to like and subscribe, and let's continue the discussion in the comments.